All right, everybody. If you were anything like us here at Green with Envy, it felt like you've been seeing double this weekend. Don't worry. It's just Al Horford and Xavier Tillman sharing the court. We're going to talk about their fit together and what it means for the short term and the long term. Coming up here on Green with Envy, let's lock it. What up, what up, what up? Welcome into a Green with Envy quick hit edition. This is your boy, Will Ware, checking in. How you doing? How you living? Joining me today, my best friend, co-host, and the coach of our podcast, the one and only Greg Menakis. What's going on, man? Tell you what, when I was a coach back in the day, I would have loved to have two Al Horfords on the court. And that does <laughs> seem like that's exactly what the Boston Celtics have now with Xavier Tillman. Finally, finally, we've gotten a shot, a chance here to see what it is like to have our guy on the court. Been waiting to do that. Been waiting for that to play that and have it actually mean something that we're going to talk about Xavier Tillman. But you're right, Greg. Not only visually and aesthetically, it doesn't feel like the Celtics now have two Al Horfords, but the way that these guys play feels like we're getting some similarity. So here's what we're doing today, folks. We, we want to talk a little bit about we finally have gotten our first taste of Xavier Tillman. We're recording this uh, after the Celtics beat down to the Warriors. And so we've gotten, let's call it a game and a half of real Xavier Tillman evidence. Ah, let's just call it two games. He, he got some run there in the second half. So we got two games of Xavier Tillman that we now know what this looks like. We don't have to theorize the potential of it. And it starts on Friday night against the Mavericks. Uh, we get Xavier Tillman out there. And if you're on Twitter, you know that it was a very common misconception that we couldn't tell what was what. I know there was a dunk from Al Horford on the wing. And the next play down, there was a layup that I thought was from Al Horford. It, in fact, was Xavier Tillman. So, Greg, you talked about as a coach, I would love to have two of these guys. Let's start with what was your what, – what has been this weekend, this past weekend, what's been your impressions of seeing Tillman on the court for the first time in real minutes? Well, I really like the the defensive versatility that Tillman's going to provide for this team because when you have Cornette – and Porzingis, they primarily function in drop coverage, right? So we don't have a backup to Al Horford that plays the same type of defense, the same versatile defense where he can come up to the level of the screen. Um, Tillman's the one guy now that we have off the bench that can function almost exactly the same as Al Horford. You're not going to be worried if he gets stuck on an island against a quicker guy. He can always recover and block a shot from behind. He can move his feet well enough. He can contest high out to the three-point line. And I think the idea of being able to play up to the level of the screen with two guys that are physical on the court at the same time is going to be really important in the playoffs when it when it does become a more physical brand of basketball. And I really like the potential of pairing Al Horford and Xavier Tillman together on the court because we've seen throughout this year, the Celtics do not like leaving Al Horford as the lone big on the court. They normally have him functioning as the four with either Porzingis or Cornette on the court with him at the same time. Normally, he only plays as the lone big starting a game when Porzingis is out, as you saw against the Warriors tonight. So the idea that we have two guys that can play the same type of defense um, – playing up to the level of the screen and also with the same IQ on the offensive side of the ball where you saw what, what happened when you put Tillman in the short role and the high low game that him and uh, him and Horford were able to play together. I think they're going to really love playing with each other because for both of them, they're going to be like, Holy shit. I just feel like I'm playing with myself. Which is always <laughs> it's, <a> good it's <laughs> long lost twins, long lost twins that are like 12 to 13 years apart in age that are finally connecting. But you know, you've talked about Tillman's um, like his strength, right? I, I love how strong he is. Like, I think you see it um, with number one. I think the way he sets screens, he's very David West esque. Yeah, I do. Feel, that's I like that comparison. And, you know, listen, I, I think one of the biggest differences between him and Al Horford is that obviously he doesn't have the outside game of Al Horford, although. We did see him knock down a three late in that Warriors That's game great. today. So we we did see it in the form. Didn't look bad. It didn't look bad. Yeah. So the uh, the, the 2.0 Al Horford. And is, let's be real. Al Horford at 27 probably wasn't hitting three pointers. 
I mean, he definitely wasn't. I mean, Al Horford and Brooke Lopez are the are the two bigs that were able to play, you know, the way the, the, the years of the big three era. <laughs> I mean, we forget that Al Horford was a rookie the year the, the last time the Celtics won championship, Al Horford was a rookie playing in game seven against the big three Celtics, right? Like that's how long this dude's been in the league for, and he didn't shoot any threes for the first seven eight years until 2000 so al horford came into the league 2002 2007 2008 he didn't shoot um more than half a three a game until 2015 2016 where he went up to three three pointers a game and that so that's what eight years into his career exactly and this is tillman's fourth season right and so in you know, so maybe that becomes part of his game as as it goes on. And we'll talk about what we think his future could be with this team. But in present day, I, I just love, and this is one of the reasons why I kind of looked at Tillman as, a, as an interesting piece here, because I think he can play next to Horford. I think he can play next to Porzingis. I think you can slot him in there. I think if we were to get to a scenario where, as you talked about, other than when he starts, Horford doesn't really play without another big, I'd be curious to know if there becomes a situation in which you needed to go small ball five, which I think has been one of the few areas the Celtics didn't necessarily have someone that could do that. I do kind of wonder what that would look like with Tillman and then it's Tatum and the others that you have out there. I'm just curious. I'm not saying that's going to be your go-to lineup, but once again, I just think you need to have the versatility when you get to the playoffs. Well, they closed the game against the Mavs with Tillman, Horford, the Jays, and Derek White, right? right. Porzingis and Drew Holiday didn't they just chill. play. They didn't play in the fourth quarter. Which is just mind-boggling, right? That yeah. Joe Mazzula can be like, oh, I'll just put in two Al Horfords, right? And that's exactly what he did. And to see the physicality that that lineup contains. And He's, imagine dude, Tillman is just strong, like just broad and strong. And, you know, we, we talked about like, he's, he's not obviously not a high flyer. He's just that ground bound. Long like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to box you out. And you're going to feel my physicality every second that I'm out here. Right, but imagine that lineup with Drew Holiday instead of Derek White, like the right. no, the next level of physicality. <laughs> like yeah. that's the most physical lineup the Celtics can put out there. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Drew Holiday, the Jays, Horford, and um, and Tillman. So I think that's a really interesting lineup just to like keep in mind for needing a defensive stop late in a game, or say we're playing against the the Heat and the Heat are trying to bully us, or the mm -hmm. Knicks are trying to bully us. And we're like, okay, well we'll just put our bully ball lineup in. Like yeah. good, luck, good luck dealing with this lineup because that like Jason Tatum at the three and Jalen Brown at the two with the most physical point guard and Drew Holiday at the one who like who's modern day Chauncey Billups with that phys physicality like th there's so much that you can look at with this team. And with you still Tillman got two bigs, it. two bigs that can, can, as you said, guard up to the nail or guard up to the level of the screen, basically. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So there's not many holes in that defense and the physicality is just something that I didn't know if Tillman and Horford could play together, I just had to, I just needed to see it. And now mm -hmm. that we saw it one time, I want to see more of it. And I want to see that being our like primary. <laughs> it's, a, it's, the, it's, it's dr drug X. I need more of it. I want to see more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to trace that euphoria, but no, I, and I think that on, on the flip side, right? Like we talked about, there's very little holes in that lineup, even that bully ball potential lineup that we just talked about. And then Tillman, when, when you add him offensively, you were talking about this on the playback that we did a little bit like him in the short role seems very spatially aware in a small sample size. He already seems pretty spatially aware. We saw at one point today where um, he caught the ball in the short role. This is against the Warriors and he slips and, and we kind of talk like, ah, he had Peyton in the corner, but he slipped and he still found a great option on the wing in Drew Holiday, which then eventually led to. Uh, an open driving lane for Jason Tatum when they swung the ball and he gets a layup. And so I think that's, once again, it also doesn't leave you any gaps on the offensive end. It's a different type of look. It's a different, you know, variability that you have in there. But I think you had talked about before, a lot of our, you know, uh, guys that were in that position before, it's going to be Derek White and Drew Holiday. Now on that short roll, you do have a bigger guy that might be able to make those decisions. And so far in this, you know, small sample size, Feels like, especially once he gets a feel for the team and, and knowing who's where and who he's going to be used to like playing with, that's another weapon. It, it still fits offensively. It's not as if you're trading in a defensive fit and then a downgrade on offense. It's just a different look on offense that still is going to have what I would presume to be a pretty high upside. Yeah, I love Tillman in the short role. I think he's a great decision maker. Um, 
this is also the first time Tillman's going to be playing with the amount of space that this this Celtics team allows him to play within, right? Because even before on the Grizzlies, yeah, they had Desmond Bain who could space the floor, mm -hmm. very Sam Hauser-esque in the way that he bends defenses, but it was mostly John Morant high pick and roll, you know yeah. what I mean? With like not a ton of shooting uh, spaced around it. So now Tillman's, we're, we're going to see another level of Tillman in terms of his playmaking and also his ability to punish a, a switch. Right, yeah. because there's going to be so many times where teams are going to have to switch a small onto him, and Tillman is a freaking beast, man. As you said, like you're going to feel Xavier Tillman every time that you come in, come into contact with him. So I think him in a short role or him just getting a switch and punishing people in the post, like Al Horford's able to do, mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to see a very efficient Xavier Tillman after having one of the worst statistical years in on an undermanned Memphis team, where yeah. he, you know wasn't it wasn't allowed to be the role player that he needs to be and this is the perfect role for him this is the star in your role type type yeah. you know atmosphere and you know to that point about tillman you know taking advantage of a mismatch i think we've saw it a couple times you saw it at least once or twice today in the warriors game uh, i'm not i can't remember off the top of my head of, in the mavericks game but his willingness to do so and, and not have a no reluctance to do it is really what i'm trying to say here right like he was able to go right at it. i think one time he had steph curry and this is something where every once in a while i still feel like al horford is sometimes a little too hesitant where i'm like yo let's let's get the he has C Corey joseph on him his back like i I understand we we want to get like the most advantage shot but that's probably it right there like mm -hmm. al horford can still post up a, a small point guard or a small two guard that's on his backside and tillman's gonna be just as physical or maybe even more physical than al would be when he gets that that ball in the post against a mismatch and so it just gives you another element with this team and yeah i'm really excited to see throughout the the stretch run here how Joe balances, you know, the, not just these two, but then also Luke Cornett, who stayed ready. No Porzingis in the Warriors game. And you've got Luke Cornett, who came in and was like, oh, I, shit, I, I just saw, you know, I just saw a double. I just saw two Al's try to come in here and take my job. One's, you know, almost 40. The other one's, you know, f fourth year in the NBA coming for my job. I got to be ready. So now there's this internal competition. And I'm going to be interested to see how Joe staggers specifically matchup to matchup the Luke Cornette and the Xavier Tillman minutes. And then also when in the rotation does he see when they should fit in or, or, or fill in within that time slot? Yeah. And you said we had a, a question from the discord, right? We did. Let's, let's go okay. to this here. So this is from, this is from uh Rob Williams, the third fan club. Shout out to our guy here. Hey, GWE, I have a question for you guys. I love Al, one of my favorite Celtics, and I think I'll be the most stoked for him out of anyone on the team if we win at all. If he is getting to the end of his career, though, and I'm curious if you see Kata and Tillman as possible big men to take up Al's mantle. I don't know if their play style, I don't, I don't know their play styles too much besides what I've seen of Kata this season. Do either of them have solid enough three-point shots to fill that versatile gap Al will inevitably leave? Thanks for your thoughts, as always. Appreciate your question, man. And once again, for those of you not in the Discord, this is what we do. You're in the Discord. You're going to get a lot of your questions answered on air here. So make sure that you are signed up with us. Go ahead. The link is in the description. Um, but yeah, let's. so let's start with this here. I mean, we've already talked a little bit about their styles. And, you know, in the question, they referenced three-point shooting. I think that's a question TBD when it comes to to Xavier Tillman. Um, I know there was a small sample size. I don't know if I think it was about the last year where he shot okay from, from three in a very small sample size. So we'll see. That's that that's going to be a TBD as far as how that specifically fits. But as far as looking ahead to the post-Al post Al Horford era, non-Al Horford era, I think this is a big reason why Tillman has made so much sense from the start because now we're seeing it. We're taking it away from the theory. We're seeing it in actuality as we just broke down. And Tillman is on an expiring rookie deal. And I don't know what it's going to cost. We kind of talked about this in the playback a little bit. I'm guessing it's somewhere around eight to $10 million is probably about the, the market right now for Tillman. Uh, and we'll see because playoffs, if he has a big playoffs or he has to step up in a big moment, that could change his entire market completely. And so going to be, are going to be strapped for cash and they're going to need guys like this though that they have on their roster to supplement the maxed out Jalen Brown, the maxed out Jason Tatum, the 30 million Chris Stapps Porzingis, the TBD extensions of Derek White and of Drew Holiday. We'll see what those bring. So they're going to need this guy, uh, you know, not just next year, but then as an owl kind of kind of backfiller. So I see Tillman much more than I see Kata 
being that guy, not just for this year, but also being that Al replacement long term. Yeah. And in terms of the three point shot, like if you just look at his shooting numbers throughout his career, he's never shot, let's see, never shot more than 33.8% from three, which was his rookie year. Mm -hmm. Since then, 20%, 26%, 22%, right? From the free throw line. 64%, 64%, 55%, 41%, right? So Tillman doesn't, those numbers don't inspire confidence that he can develop right. a, an outside shot, right? And this is the one big look, difference between him and Al right now. That we, that like, it's just glaring. Like that will be a very big difference. Yeah, and one. Tillman, Xavier Tillman is like an Al Horford, um, like re replacement and facsimile, I think is probably the best word that you can use of him. He's nowhere near as good as Al Horford is, right? And like right. the peak of Al Horford, he's never going to be that guy. He was never going to be the, you know, um, the person to lead his team to a, a college championship like Al was able to do with back to back titles at Florida, right? So, like, and, and, and real quick, people forget. Al was a five time. Al's been a five time all star in this. Yeah. Season. Like, right. Like, like that's how high level of a guy Al was at the peak of, of right. Al Horford's power. But if, if you're looking for Tillman to come in and replace late career Al Horford, exactly. now we're talking because we're already seeing what late career Al Horford does for this team. And if you can find a cheap, succession plan for Al Horford and Xavier Tillman. I think that's the perfect succession plan right there for you. A guy that you, you know, is going to be a great team player is going to make all the right plays, a great positional defender. And it's just bringing that toughness, that David West toughness that I, that I mm -hmm. referenced earlier. I think that's what Xavier Tillman does with Kata. He's more of like the Rob Williams, um, like project type big, you know, like he's yeah. much bigger than Rob, like physically bigger than Rob, but functioning very similarly as a vertical spacer, um, someone that can block shots at the rim. But with Kata, like, I think he's one of those guys where if, the best case scenario with with Kata is that he does become a backup big in the league, right? Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, he's not in the league in two years. And that's kind of yeah. the reality. With, and, and you with know, him. with Tillman, you know, that's an NBA guy, right? Yeah. You, you're 100% know that with Kata, it's still a bit of a question. And I, I do feel like with Kata, I don't think Joe's an anti Kata guy by any means, but I do think K Kata would have been a big time EMA guy. Like, I think he would have fit what because he because he basically like you said he basically is filling that Rob role. And I think because Joe likes everybody to have a little bit more versatility, mm -hmm. probably than than what Kata brings. And if you're going to have, you know, a, a singular skill set and, and even Sam, and I'm going to use Sam Howes as my reference here being like, I think most people look like, oh, he's just a three point shooter. I think Sam has proven he can do enough of whether it's crashing the glass or holding up on defense where he gives you actually probably a little like you gotta if joe's gonna have only you do one thing specifically it's gonna be knock down threes and be that be that spacer and be that gravity guy where kata can certainly do that from you know a vertical perspective like we've seen with rob or or at least theoretically could but i just don't know if that's as much missoula ball as that would have been probably lean a little bit more email ball even though i don't think missoula is opposed to kata anyway i don't mean to suggest that no yeah it's just that he's not he's not going to be one of those guys that you trust to dribble pass and shoot with Tillman. Right. He can at least function out of the high post and rubble, run a dribble handoff with Kata. You've seen flashes of passing ability and he's so big that he can punish a mismatch mm -hmm. better than pretty much. <laughs> and he's willing to, he's yeah, he gets a lot of offensive rebounds on his own misses. Exactly. So like Kata, honestly, like I've said this before on the pod, but I'll repeat it here. Like he kind of reminds me of Deandre Ayton. Like the way that he plays, like I could see him being. It's not a good um, comp for Deandre Ayton, but yeah. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, just like his physical frame and then his ability to kind of just be really big around the rim. He has a decent touch from the mid range. You see him shoot free throws and it looks, it looks natural for him. Yeah. So like, that's the type of guy that I kind of see Kata in the mold of. You know, mm -hmm. where Tillman's in the mold of Horford. So if you're right. looking for a replacement, a succession plan, Tillman is the obvious replacement for Horford. Kata is one of those guys where you, you want to keep him around because he might blossom into something special where, you know, maybe he's never he's I mean, he, he's never going to be an all star. Let's just throw that out there. Nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But as I said, like best yeah. case scenario, he could be a backup big where the fan base is like, hey, should he be starting? 
you know, like that's the type type of um, ceiling that I see for right. Kata, which is a, a, a good player. You know, I think Kata could be a really good player. I like a lot of what I see out of him, but Tillman's the the clear choice for a succession plan. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think with like I mentioned before, the, the the dynamics of his contract lend itself to that even more so because this team is is going to be in the tax. This team's going to need to find some you know hidden gems, and I think. When you think about the long-term plan of this, Al's got one more year in his deal. You find a way to get a two, three-year deal with Tillman. You're already set up for, yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe Al's still like, yeah, I still got more in the tank. Here's another $5 million deal. Oh, you only need me to play 15 minutes and I get to right. play with my twin? Let's go. Exactly. So so who? I, I, don't, I don't even know if it's going to end with Al Horford, but as he gets older and older, you just need that in line. I think Tillman fits that timeline. So <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. X-Man making his presence known here over the weekend. Uh, really excited. Like you said, Greg, it's like a drug. I want to see more of it. I'm very excited uh, for this upcoming week. We'll see if he gets some run against the Cavs. They got two bigs. Let's see. This is another big one real quick before we go. I'm going to be very curious for that game in, in Denver to see if Xavier Tillman kind of becomes that Grant Williams replacement. He will be. Some, some minutes. So that's going to be really fun to watch and see what that looks like. And then even Phoenix. They like to go small sometimes because they don't really have many options. So they're going to have to go potentially KD at the five for certain moments. So we'll see what, what that looks like for Joe Missoula and how he counters. So a lot of fun matchups coming up this week. We'll see what it looks like. Keep it locked in here with Green with Envy. We will have you covered throughout the week with previews. We'll have some more podcasts. We'll have a couple of post-game shows for you as well. Uh, Greg, been a fun Sunday, man. Uh, this is, this is a fun day. Excited for what this week has to bring. Any, uh, any final thoughts before we queue up some black sheep optimists? Nah, man. I'll see you on Tuesday. All right, bro. We're out. Peace. You got me on the floor, you know I came to play I know I shouldn't, but you seem to take my pain away And every time I score, Jason Tatum fade away I close my eyes and I'm floating your river I call to see if you open, you know I hope you deliver Every time you're getting close, I 